So as you're building React Native applications and they go beyond just a single page with static content, it becomes very important to understand the component lifecycle that comes with React. Not just React Native, but React. So React Native is piggybacking on all the JavaScript for React and it uses the component lifecycle. This is really, once you understand props and you understand state, you have to understand the order that React uses to work with all those properties and the order in which it builds your component. I have here a simple example with a text field and a button. When I click the button, I'm going to call a function. So change something is a method that I've created myself inside of here. Now, render is something that you've seen in every one of the components that I've built so far in this tutorial, or the tutorial series, rather. It is one of these lifecycle methods. So I don't have to define what render is anywhere. I don't have to say that it is a function or something. It just looks like I'm calling it, sort of. There are other ones, like constructor. This is actually the first one that's going to be called. Just like this. So the first lifecycle method that gets called is constructor. If you put it inside of here, this is where you would create your initial state. I can say this dot state and my val is abc123. Okay. I've created something in state called my val, and the constructor is the place where I do that. So this is the first thing that happens. When the component is being built, the constructor gets called first. Now, after that happens, there's uh, one called get, get derived state from props. It's very rare that you would do it. It's just a chance to update the state variable with something that's coming from props. But in the constructor, when the component's first loading, you have an opportunity to do that anyway. I could take something from props and put it into my val right here at this point in the constructor. So we'll set that one aside for the moment. That's the get derived state from props. So that's the other method and it takes props and state as arguments. So it will receive the values from those two things in these variables. Next is the render method. So render, great, we're building it, we're putting it all together, we're setting it up on the page. After the render method, the next one that gets called is called component did mount. That means, hey, you know what? I finished putting your thing on the page. So the render has happened. It's now visible. What would you like to do next? We are allowed in here to call this.setState. Just be aware that if you're calling it right here, what's going to happen is you are going to be updating state, which is going to trigger a reload, which is going to call render, which is then going to call this.setState again. So if if this is always changing it, you're going to get stuck in this loop where it's constantly updating itself. So you have to be very careful about you doing that here. Be very cautious about set state here. A better option for changing something in set state would be have your own custom function. Inside of here, like I said, on press, this change something this would be a good time for me to update state. So we'll say this.state, oh sorry, this.setState. We never want to set the variable directly. We always want to use the setState method to update it. And inside of here, I'm going to change val to, let's just get the current date and time. There we go. So I'm updating. When I click on this button, boom. What I did was I clicked here, that called this function, change something, change something, then called on this, then this change in state is going to trigger the update lifecycle events. So that's the next one that we've got. We have one called should component update. And this one's going to get props and state, what the new ones are going to be. And then you can decide whether or not to return true or return false. So we can do some logic inside of here. Now let's say we wanted to take a look at these being written out in the console. Working with React Native, 
in the terminal where you launched Expo Start to be able to do this, that's where we can see the console log statements. So let's add a few in here. Console log render. And I'm going to put this inside of each one of these so we can see all of them happening. So in the constructor, it'll say constructor component did mount was we'll say did mount inside of change something. You can see that that happens when we click inside of here. We'll say should update. So this gives us a chance to sort of back out of any potential updating that we're going to do. All right, I'll bring up my terminal. I'll move this over. Let's shrink this screen down, and then I will bump up the font size to make it easier for you to see what's going on. So constructor, render, and did mount. Those three happened. Now if I come in here and I click, there we go. We got the change something event happen, and then the should update, but nothing after that, because inside of should update, right here, we returned false. Now let's change this to true. Not tour, but true. So I'll save it. There we go. Now this constructor render did mount. Those three events happened. When I click on here, there we go. Change something, should update, yes. And then the render happens again. So this should update gives us a chance to say whether or not we want to redo this. Okay, now the last one here, after the render, happens for the second time. So that's the update lifecycle that's happening now. We will also have a component did update. Instead of did mount, we've got a did update. So let's put another console log statement in there. Did update. Save. Okay, we got the initial three. We'll get change something. Should update. We said true. So the render happened again and then did update. And there is one other that you can add inside of here. And that last one is component will unmount. So we're getting rid of that component and we're moving on to something else. And there we have it. Uh, oh, sorry, that's a capital M. There we go. Now, if you want to see these in action, I will give you this URL right here. This is a great little diagram for version 16.4 of React. Now we're up to 16 points something else. I can't remember exactly, but these lifecycle methods haven't changed. So the constructor, there's the mounting phase, the updating phase, and the unmounting phase. Then we have the constructor, then the render. The stuff's actually on the screen and then component did mount. Then in the updating, render, and then component did mount, and then inside here there was also that should, and then at the end, component will unmount, and if you want to see those other ones, there's a little checkbox up here at the top. If we check on that, you can see here's that should component update and that get derived state from props. So great little diagram, interactive, tells you when each of these lifecycle methods are taking place and helps you to understand when you should be doing things. Like, when should I update state? Well, I shouldn't update state inside of here. Inside of component did update, I can do it here, but once again, it's like this did mount. If I do that, I need to be very careful. I don't end up in some sort of loop. It's much better to change state inside of your own custom functions. The initial state gets set up here. Then we can do the update here inside of our own custom methods. All right. So there's an example with all the different lifecycle methods. Um, and for component did mount, Remember that this is on the initial load. So I'll put that message in there for you as well. This is on the initial load, component did mount, and then component did update. This is on future loads. 
So it's not the initial one, but it's the future loads. That's when this one takes place. Component did mount. This is a great time to do your things like geolocation, fetch, your API calls, things like that. That's what you do inside of here. Then component did update. Well, you can make a decision. Do you want to do your geolocation again? Do you want to do your fetch API again? Once again, watch out for loops because are you reloading state every time you're doing this? So you don't want to get into a situation where you're constantly doing geolocation or API calls, and every one of those is causing a change in state, which is causing a re-render. So you get into this loop where it's constantly asking for new data and then re-rendering the page. So you probably not, you probably don't want to do these down inside of here. So let's just leave it at that. Watch out for loops. All right, so I hope that has been helpful. I hope that uh, helps you understand these different lifecycle methods. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.